So welcome back to the leak, and uh, this was supposed to be a Christmas special. Well, well life got in the way. So, um, well, there, I suppose there are many other reasons to celebrate. Pi1541 has just released. Steve has just released a new version. And uh, it is the month of uh, Pausa, 2076, in the Hindu calendar. So, uh, and Pausa in Swedish means to take a break. And I guess that's not a bad idea either. Uh, what is expected of me to say is probably Happy New Year. So um, have one of those. And today we're going to check out my Amiga. Yeah, you heard it right. I have an Amiga 600 and uh, it's not working anymore. So we're going to have to see what's happened to it. I believe it is probably leakage. And this is a perfect task for the leak. Now, if you wonder where the blinky lights uh, come from, it's uh, because I got this awesome hat, Christmas hat for for, for Christmas. So uh, it's very amusing. And to take a look at the problem at hand, we can see that uh, the Amiga has gone all 1950s on me and lost all sense of color. And uh, I blame actually this area around here this is the video encoder chip and next to it we have some capacitors and they look really really nasty at this point and the problem with this chip is it takes um, it's not a problem it's a function it takes rgb signal from the video chip i suppose it's uh, one of them it's the ecs chipset so it must be Denise Yes, I'm pretty sure that's it. I'm sorry. I'm not really an Amiga person. I beg your forgiveness for my ignorance So I'm probably not going to use the, the composite output very much on this one because it has an excellent RGB output But the leaky capacitors needs to go because otherwise they will corrode the entire board and I have counted I think there are 14 capacitors 10 of them are leaking so this is a uh, a large job and in this case I will actually replace all of the capacitors even though it's against my religion but of course if they are broken they are broken I'll just twist them off this is not the way to do it yeah I'll do it anyway it, it does work quite well and if the board is of good quality there's no really no mm, not that much uh, damage to the tracks and uh, actually got one track lifted by doing this but it didn't break so I could I could still use it so remove all of them and clean up the board uh, I'll use uh, vinegar white vinegar pure white vinegar without any additives to neutralize the the chemicals from the um, capacitors and then I'll use isopropanol to clean that up and on with the soldering iron and some soldering braid to remove the rest of the legs. And uh, here we see the board after uh, removing all the legs. And after cleaning, it looks quite all right, actually. Yeah, that's a lot better. So yeah, there's a little bit of green. No, that was a reflection of the other board, so. Okay. Now for the replacement capacitors. It was a bit tricky because the 10 microfarad capacitors actually was marked with 100. And the markings on, on uh, SMD capacitors can be a bit tricky sometimes. So I'd like to have a tool like this at hand so I can see that this is actually the 10 microfarad uh, type so uh, one solder blob put some extra flux solder and press down the capacitor for one leg and then add solder oh that's shaky that's really shaky oh come on yeah put some extra solder on the second leg and press down and yeah i should have probably heated that leg up a bit more but that's the process that i went through to to solder these in Still no uh, good result, actually. 
we're still getting the exactly the same problem and I was sort of expecting that because there are a couple of components we can see on the oscilloscope we can see this is the entire frame of the picture we can see that floppy actually entering the floppy drive here if you're um, if you're a bit imaginative I also plugged in a VCR player so uh, that we can compare with something we zoom in on a line uh, zoomy 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 we zoomy more -y. here are the lines showing up and on the front shelf of each line we are supposed to see a little burst of high frequency and we can see that they don't exist here we we have the the sync signal and we have the the initial shelf and if we look at the VCR that I plugged in also we can see this little high frequency burst in the beginning this is the color burst and this is what gives the television or screen the reference for the color signal on top of the luma but on the Amiga this is gone and so there is no color signal being created there could be a number of reasons for this but I am already suspecting actually the delay line and the bandpass filter that is associated with the video encoder chip so uh, what's generating this uh, color burst signal is crystal oscillator and some circuitry and this is a PAL version so the PAL frequency of the color signal is about 4.3 Connect an oscilloscope to the crystal and we see that it's not the cleanest way to get uh, the signal of the, the crystal but at least we can see something going on here we have 0.1 microsecond resolution and uh, if we calculate what frequency we're getting off this uh, we have a period of roughly 0 0.23 or a little less 0 0.225 and we can calculate the frequency from this uh, period time uh, and what we're getting is about 4.44 megahertz frequency and this is uh, very much consistent with the PAL frequency of 4.43 roughly and I also measured to make sure that this uh, signal reaches all the way to the video encoder chip and uh, it indeed does so um, the video encoder uh, that is standard in the Amiga 600 uh, um, is dependent on some external circuitry to mix the Luma and Chroma into a composite signal and this is done with the bandpass filter and a delay line that goes between pins 15 through 18 and uh, there is uh, a chip that uh, is a sort of more expensive version of what's already in here that doesn't require these external components it has them built in so we take a look at the data sheet for the old chip and check what pins are are crucial for the Amiga and it's the inputs and outputs for, of RGB and also the inputs of a sync and audio but if we don't use the RF modulator we can actually ignore the audio uh, and uh, comparing with the new chip these lines are exactly the same so if we mask out the pins 13 through 18 it should be possible to swap these uh, the old chip for the new one the only thing we need to think about is a little resistor between 5 volts and the Y trap pin to tell the chip to, to use its internal circuitry so in a proper New Year spirit, out with the old and in with the new. I use hot air because this, this is a time-consuming and very dangerous thing to do without hot air. It's quite dangerous with hot air, to be honest. But it's uh, so much easier to get it out cleanly. And uh, soldering braid and then some cleaning with isopropanol will give this a nice and shiny surface. And then I'll use Kapton tape. Uh, which is a heat resistant tape to uh, mask out the pads that we don't want to be connected to the board uh, and we're talking about the six pins up in the corner and the two sound pins uh, that we're not interested in because I will also remove 
the RF modulator and use that spot on the board for, for better things. So that should be a good alignment. And uh, well actually, I, I forgot the flux, so there's it out of alignment again. And then we solder it in carefully and carefully with a, a conical tip again. I, I hate conical tips, actually. Uh, I think there is not much in the world that I would say that I hate, but uh, this is one of them. I keep using them, though. Mm, not sure why. So this resistor we were talking about, we need a 2.61 kilo ohm resistor, and I only had surface mount available. So I'll use one and I'll put legs on them and see if I can get it cleanly mounted on top of the ship. I, I, I use the old one actually as a, as a template to, to measure a bit. And this is very fiddly. Uh, worst of all, I'm using a conical tip, which uh, should be clear by now that I'm not so fond of. Also, I'm using way too much heat, so I'm, I'm getting issues because... Uh, I should probably have been sleeping at this point. Um, oh, that oh, that came loose, and this uh, yeah no that no okay. This is where I get frustrated, and we're lucky that everything is still in one piece at this point. But in the end, actually, it it turned out quite good. So that'll do. That'll do nicely. So let's test this and first I'll plug it into the oscilloscope and I can already see that uh, something different has happened here. And yes, there is a color burst on the front shelf of the lines. It's not super clean compared to the VCR, which is, uh, where is it? There it is. Uh, quite a smooth shelf there and the Amiga is a bit uneven, but it should be within specs. So, well, all we need to do is plug it into a TV and see what we get as a result. Happy New Year, everybody, and I hope you get a great 2020 and a lot of exciting projects to explore. Here we have Amigas, we have Spectra videos, and we have Apples to look forward to, so stay tuned!